Okay, so the observer. So what I'd like everyone to do is um, just to become aware of what you're experiencing in this moment. Now, th there could be uh, sensations in the body, there could be thoughts, uh, there could be feelings, there can be stories, there can be projections, there can be all of these perceptions. All of these you can use, whatever, it, what is the most dominant thing you're experiencing at the moment? Is it something in the body or is it something in the mind? Some kind of thoughts, some very strong obsessive thoughts which are going on? Is it some form of um, physical sensation? Are people feeling exhausted? Is there uh, tiredness or physical symptoms? Is there a sensation of sh shortness of breath? Uh, exhaustion, fog, or is it just a lot of mental fear? Are there lots of stories and thoughts passing by? Whatever it is, uh, become aware of what's dominant in your experiencing. Now let's say there's lots of thoughts going on in the mind. The first thing to recognize with thoughts are that they are passing. They're like passing clouds that are passing by. So one needs to get uh, detached, detached observing of any thoughts which are arising in, in the mind. So how do you do this? See if one can be now the observer of thoughts. It's a little bit like uh, being watching a TV. If, if you're watching a film and you become hypnotized by the story on the, on the screen, then you get absorbed into it. It's almost like you're in the nightmare of a horror film. But if you suddenly realize and wake up, you're sort of reborn out of being stuck in the story of the thoughts and you become aware that you are the observer or the detached observing of uh, the stories going on. So can you be the observer of your thoughts? Realize that thoughts come and go, but the observer is always here. So if you're still hooking into thoughts, then try and be the observing uh, the observer of that which hooks in or identifies with thoughts. What is it within consciousness that wants to latch on to the next thought or wants to identify with the next thought? Become aware of this tendency in the mind to want to hook into the next, the next thought that comes along, like bait. And see if you can just detach from that and be the observing of the thoughts. As you do this, you'll start to recognize that there is a silence or a stillness or a witnesser behind the thoughts. And as you, as you become more embedded in this observing witnessing state, um, you start to get a space, a distance arises between thoughts and the essence of who you are. If the observer is still hooking into or, or identifying with thoughts, this is what I call an interested or identified observer. So see if there's another observer or a witnesser that observes the interested witnesser of thoughts. And this observer, which is observing any observer that has any interest in thoughts, see if there's any thoughts that exist in this space of observing. As you contemplate and go deeper into the observer, you realize that there is a thoughtless observer which has no interest in any story or wants to get hooked into any drama. It's free of drama because it doesn't want to hook into any drama. This is an experience of consciousness. The only things that you experience are those things which are interesting. Anything in consciousness which is not interesting is not experienced. So this power lies within consciousness to let go of the meaning projected onto thoughts. And as this is uh, released, uh, as the value and the projections of thoughts and the meaning of thoughts is released, what they suddenly disappear and one goes into the thoughtless observer, which has no interest in the stories that pass. Next, is there any kind of uh, tiredness or exhaustion or awareness of the body? Are there any physical symptoms? Does it seem like there's a temperature? Does it seem like there's a shortness of breath? Is there a tiredness or exhaustion or a lack of sleep? Is there, are there any of these states going on? We'll recognize that the body and any feelings or sensations or physical symptoms 
going on in the body are objects. They're also observed, they come and go, but that which observes physical symptoms, let's take, for example, asthma and, sh and shortness of breath. You know, there are times in life when there's no shortness of breath, and then there are times when there's shortness of breath. Now, if you don't latch onto the story of it, you realise that shortness of, a, of breath is like a cloud. Something is registering shortness of breath, which is not shortness of breath. There is an observing of any kind of tightness in the chest or any kind of uh, shortness of breath. Because that which is observing or witnessing shortness of breath is not short of breath. So use the, uh, use the symptoms, for example, if there is a, symptoms of asthma, to see what's observing the asthma. Is the witnesser of asthma experiencing asthma? If the witnesser is experiencing it, then that's what I'd call an interested or an attached witnesser that's engrossed in the story of the symptoms, because asthma is just a symptom that comes and goes. So is there a detached observing of the symptoms? So as you do this, you realise that there is that which, which is aware of asthma, but which is not asthma. That aspect of consciousness is always here. That the symptoms are personal when you hook into them, and they start to dissipate when one is the detached observer of the symptoms. Next thing could be um, also exhaustion or tiredness, foggy head, uh, whatever it is, chronic symptoms. Chronic symptoms are very, uh, are very interesting because they seem to be, it seems to be like they're, they're with you most of the time. You know, you wake up with a fog or exhaustion or tiredness and you go to bed. But there have been times in life when you haven't been sick or you haven't had these chronic symptoms. So again, fog or tiredness or chronic symptoms of exhaustion are like clouds. They come and go. Something observes when a chronic symptom is here and something observes when it's not here. So by this, one recognises that actually the observer of a chronic symptom or the witnesser of a chronic symptom is not the chronic symptom. Something knows when the symptoms are here, when it's not here. So can you be the observer of tiredness or exhaustion or weariness? And can you be the detached observing of these symptoms? So as you become the detached observer of any symptoms, then you become free of it. It's like the detached observer, which is not buying into the symptoms, is free. And as you immerse yourself in the detached observing of any chronic symptom, you'll find that you'll disappear. It's like an illusion that when you're really interested in a symptom, it takes a hold and becomes real. And when you're in the detached observing, it disappears like a cloud because it's, it's like its illusion is, uh, is recognised to be fallacious. Uh, this can also be done with time. Is there any sense of time now? If there is, like you're strongly in time, can you be the detached observing of time? Is there a place of witnessing deep within consciousness which has no interest and projects no value onto the sense of time? And in this place of witnessing of time with no interest in time, does time exist? Uh, is, is there any sense of body at this point? If you've let go of symptoms, whether it be asthma or tiredness, Hopefully, if you reattach into the story of thoughts, just detach and go back into the witnesser and let it go. So if there's any sense of a body, like there's an awareness of the body on the chair, then that is an object. There is, a, there is something which is observing the sense of body. So can you be that which observes or witnesses the sense of body? Is there an observing which has no interest in the body? Is, and in this observing, is there any sense of body? So as you do this, you realise that everything, whether it be a thought, whether it be tiredness, whether it be asthma, these are all like passing clouds. But there is something before all the passing clouds which doesn't pass. It, where time does not pass, where bodies do not exist, where thoughts do not exist, where suffering does not exist. And if anything does exist which can pass, then there is that which is observing it pass. Another thing is, if you're struggling with being the observer of thoughts, bodies, or physical symptoms and sensations, 
then realize that if this symptom is fluctuating, there is an observer of fluctuation. For example, if you have an asthma attack, it's not constant. It's becoming stronger or lesser, higher or lower. What observes the fluctuation of an asthma attack? What observes more or less tiredness? What is observing the next passing thought? So that which, that which is obser the observer never passes, but it observes all things that pass. And as the observer becomes detached, i.e. it doesn't want to project meaning onto thoughts, bodies or physical symptoms, it becomes free of them. So let's just spend uh, two or three minutes in silence together, going deep within uh, with this exercise. 